çöp gel şu, çöp gel şu. Sedi, çöp gel şu, çöp gel şu. A very good afternoon to all. We welcome the Chief Guest, Honorable Union Minister of State for Home Affairs, Government of India, Sri Kiran Rejijuji, and the Guest of Honor, Dr. Vanita Murali Kumarji, President of Central Council of Indian Medicine, to this valedictory function. May I request Professor Lobson Tenzin? Chairman of Central Council of Tibetan Medicine to offer the traditional scarf to the dignitaries. I now request Dr. Tilly Pesan Tokawa, Director of Chopuri Tibetan Medical Institute, to deliver a brief report of this International Conference on Soa Ripa Tibetan Medicine. Thank you. So we would like to heartily welcome Shri Kiran Rijiju, Honorable Union Minister of State for Home Affairs, Government of India, for your kind presence on this August gathering of the Third International Conference on Tibetan Medicine, Swaripa. Uh, so, so, respected guests on the dais and off the dais, so I'd just like to uh, read a short report on the third international conference of uh, Tibetan medicine, Soa Rikpa. The reason for organizing this international conference on Soa Rikpa is to present the science of health and well-being in its totality. Understanding the value and quality of Soa Rikpa, a system having a very long history of its comprehensive practice and concept it has been utilized for the mental and physical well-being of humankind, irrespective of caste, creed, or color. During the reign of the Tibetan emperor, Tisson Tisen, in the 8th century, many medical scholars from the neighboring countries like India, China, Persia, Nepal, gathered at Samya Monastery, Tibet, where the first international conference on medicine was held, as documented in the historical records. In the 20th century, an unfortunate and unprecedented political and religious transformation occurred in Tibet when His Holiness the Dalai Lama was compelled to take asylum in India after the brutal invasion of Tibet by China. His Holiness established Tibetan schools, settlements, and monastic institutions in exile with genuine support from the government and people of India. Menzikhang at Dharamsala was part of these establishments. Gradually, the Department of Soa Rikpa at Central Institute of Higher Tibetan Studies and at Central Institute of Buddhist Studies, Le Ladakh, and Chakpuri Tibetan Medical Institute at Darjeeling were founded. Under the benevolent guidance of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, Central Council of Tibetan Medicine was established on 5th January 2004 after the Tibetan Medicine Council Act 2003 was passed by the 13th Assembly of the Tibetan Parliament in exile. Till date, five medical colleges, 467 medical practitioners, and five pharmacies have been registered under the Central Council of Tibetan Medicine, Central Tibetan Administration. Seeing the need for more interaction and exchange among the Sawaripa practitioners around the globe, the second international conference was held in Dharamsala in the year 2012, where 250 delegates from 21 different countries participated. Carrying forward the legacy of such essential interface, this time Central Institute of Higher Tibetan Studies, 
Chakwari Tibetan Medical Institute and Central Council of Tibetan Medicine have come together to jointly organize the third International Conference on Tibetan Medicine, SOARIKPA, for five days from 25th February to 1st March. The entire conference was divided into various themes based on the urgency of the subjects, which are glimpses into the three great medical systems of Asia, present status of SOARIKPA in Asian countries, clinical management of somatic disorders and psychological disorders, pharmaceutics and research, profound or advanced practices of SOA RIGPA, medical legal issues, materia medica and its challenges, and practical workshop. The conference comprised of six plenary lectures, 28 parallel sessions, 12 paper presentations, and one day of practical workshop with five sessions, which will be held tomorrow. Altogether, 201 participants and 30 expert speakers assembled from 10 different countries around the world for this conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Tokawa. I request Ms. Galina, a participant from Moscow, Russia, to share her reflection on the conference. I want to thank you for the organizing uh, of this conference. We, lost, we listened a lot of interesting sessions, had a lot of interesting meetings. And you know, traditional Tibetan medicine is the part of uh, Russian culture also and uh, Russian history. That's why it's very important to, to us uh, to connect with you. And so I want to uh, invite you to the all first All-Russian Congress on Soviet Medicine, which will be in Moscow in November of this year. Thank you. I now request Dr. Nashala Nyinda, a participant from USA, to share her reflection on the conference. Greetings, Tashi Dele, all the distinguished guests and participants, and thank you for organizing such a wonderful conference. So, originally in Sangay Menla's palace in Tanaduk, he gave a precious teaching, and he was surrounded by four groups. He was surrounded by sages, and gods, and Buddhists, and non-Buddhists. And when he gave his teaching, he gave it through an emanation, of his mind and his speech, which had a conversation which continues to be the main text which all of us study till today. But though he gave this teaching in a different language, through the power of the lineage, through the gyu, then this was able to be transmitted to everyone in their own language. Like this, in the modern times, when I went to study Tibetan medicine, there was only two books in English. These days, Tibetan medicine is spreading like wildfire in the West, and we have to be very, very careful to maintain the lineage, to keep this lineage very pure and unbroken. This is very, very important. Likewise, at the same time, we have to make this more available to the other people who are not Tibetan who want to study Tibetan medicine, who have genuine desire to hold this lineage in a proper way, we must leave no stone unturned. We must leave nothing left out of transmission. In translation, this is a huge task, which I request all of our senior genlas and distinguished people to please, we must make this available, because as we are in the degenerate times, there is many people who want to sell off things very quickly and to make shortcuts. We must ensure that this never happens. So we have to keep the lineage very pure. And it is my hope and my prayer that we can keep people before profit and quality before quantity. Tujiche. We would now like to honor the dignitaries by offering mementos. And for this, may I request 
Keshengawa Samdala, Vice Chancellor of Central Institute of Higher Tibetan Studies, to do the honor. Thank you. May I now request our guest of honor, Dr. Wanita Murali Kumarji, President of Central Council of Indian Medicine, to address the gathering. It's a very uh, lovely evening to present my address in front of you all because I am from Ayurveda system of medicine, but heading your system, respected Minister of State present here. He has made his time for you all. And the Director, Vice Chancellor, and Director, and Director of CTTM, because I can't call them by names because it is very difficult for me to pronounce your names. <laughs> it's a wonderful evening. I, I, I didn't expect such a crowd uh, I, I was thinking before coming to well literature section, there will be some hundred people. Mm -hmm. But the hall is very much full even for the well literature section. It shows your enthusiasm for the promotion of your system. This is a wonderful thing uh, I am uh, observing today, how united you are all. Also, I have observed a discipline before the minister could come inside. You maintained very much silence in this crowd. I, I really liked your uh, discipline. Friends, today we are in the world of digitization, you know. Previously, a lot of revolutions happened in this world. The first revolution was automobile revolution. When the auto motor cars started coming, people started thinking, I have to sell my bullock carts, I will lose my job. But still, people had, people bought cars, they turned into drivers, it incurred a lot of jobs. Then came this electricity revolution. People started worrying, if after 6 o'clock light is there, my boss will ask me to work till night. But it incurred, more, it incurred more jobs, night shifts came, more industries started working. Then came this computer revolution, where we call this computer idiot box. This typewriters, uh, stenographers started thinking, no, no, I will lose my job if this computers come. But it incurred a lot of jobs, as we all know. Today is the we are digital revolution going on in this world. We can't escape from WhatsApp, mobile phones, and, and so and so, anything going on in this digital world. Patients come to us after browsing Google. Google. Today it is not Mata Pita Guru Devam, it is Mata Pita Google Devam. You know, it has changed. <laughs> I know, I know two friends, you know, two friends from school, no, school friends. One turned into a surgeon, one turned into a businessman. This businessman's wife had severe stomach pain. So this businessman is out of country, so he called his surgeon friend and said, my wife is suffering from stomach pain, it is appendicitis, get her operated. You know, we get a lot of irritation when patients tell the diagnosis. Similarly, surgeon also got irritated and said, I am the doctor who has to decide, send your wife first. But it was actually appendicitis, he has to get operated, you know, it was, it was done. After one and a half years, same business friend called the surgeon friend and said, my wife is suffering from appendicitis, again she is suffering from stomach pain, get her operated. But the surgeon replied, no, 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 it is me to decide. In human body, there could be only one appendix. But you know what the business friend replied? I know, I know, I have searched in Google, human body can have only one appendix, but human being can have a second wife. I am sending my second wife. <laughs> you know, this kind of things happen in this digitized world. And 
we are the traditional system of medicine. It's a biggest challenge how we are going to cope up with this digitization and the traditional system of medicine is a biggest challenge. This is very, very important. Central Council of Indian Medicine delivered Savaripa baby, that is Tibetan medicine in India as Savaripa baby in 2010. You all, uh, after I became president, uh, fortunately we have a good prime minister, you see. He created a separate ministry called Ayush. So he also quoted one day, there is Ayurveda revolution going on. I know uh, like how digital revolution is going on, there is an un unnoticed Ayush revolution is also going on. We had a separate ministry by the blessings of this prime minister and we started improving, you know. We have lot of support now, lot of encouragement now. In 2017, we notified minimum standard regulations for Savaripa. To notify this in 2017, we planned a visit. Actually, I was not very much, uh, not a very good believer of the system. I thought uh, there is a lot of systems, you know, Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani. Finally, after a big research, I found there is major linguistic difference in these cases. You know, Siddha is studied in Tamil, Yunani is studied in Urdu, Ayurveda is studied in Sanskrit. I thought it will be in a similar way. So we planned a committee to visit. And you know, I, I was very suspicious. I myself went to two centers, one Mensikon and one Leilatak, you know. I also had, uh, I was received with a very, very warm welcome and lot of traditional scarves are with me in my house. They gave, every time we go, they gave this. I was totally amazed. I met a physician. I think his name is Yashi Todin. He received now Padma Shri. Hats off to Savaripa that Prime Minister recognized him and given Padma Shri to your system. I myself visited and I was highly impressed. I am highly impressed and we planned everything and we notified everything, you know. Now hereafter your degree will be called as BSRMS, Bachelor of Savaripa System of Medicine and Surgery. People wanted to cut this surgery from you all. They don't want, but Dr. Tinglis, who was a member then in CCM, fought a lot to bring and I supported him. We, we thought that it should not, this Guru Shishya thing which is going on now with you, it, it should not get faded away because we are bringing it into institution form. The buildings, infrastructure, classrooms, big, big things should not fade away this Guru Shishya thing. So we thought we'll have minimum. Hereafter, there must be a 10 bedded hospital functioning and 4 minimum IP patient must be there and 20 OP patient must attend. There will be 29 papers for you to clear the course. It will be of 5 and a half years four and a half year study and one year internship. We have taken steps and we have notified it. We have informed to all the current running Savaripa courses institution and we have given two years time to cope up with this minimum standards and then now you know, now you're legalized. Now we have legalized you. Now comes a big challenge, you know. When you are Savaripa system somewhere traditionally practicing, people don't question you. But when you are legalized, now people will start asking you, is it evidence based? Is it so and so? How it works? How you prepare this? Even I was impressed of your precious bill, pills. I, I wanted to buy, but they said, without prescription, we will not give you. You are also a principal. <laughs> I wanted to give it for my patient, but she said, no, without prescription, we are not giving you. Once you become legalized, now you have to work a lot for the promotion of your system. Like, you know, if you get into education, if you want to become a teacher, you should not teach the students, you, you should inspire the students. That is very, very important. Teaching is inspiring, not managing. Managers will have subordinate, but teachers must have followers. If you get into research, research mind is even first year student can have a suggestion, according to me. Eight years old person who created rocket, NASA installed, you know. Eight years old boy who developed a small rocket, tiny rocket, it was installed by NASA. Research must be in such a way Please do not do drug research, laboratory research, animal research and come out with some chemical compound. Yes, 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 this is working, reserpine is working, curcumin is working, no. From the beginning itself, you take up research to prove your principles. That is very, very important. If you prove your principles, then sky is the limit for you. No one can stop you from your growth. So we, from Ministry of Ayush, we will be keeping on uh, offering our continuous support for you, for your growth. And uh, I wish, I wish every institution will full, fulfill these regulations as the minimum standards and come out. All I suggest to you is, please be dedicated to your system. Dedication brings you everything. This is what the Lam also said. You know, uh, the health definition here said is happiness is the highest form of health. 
be happy and be dedicated to your system. Do not get diverted away. Do not never lose hope when people criticize us like, do you have evidence? Always try to tell we are practice-based evidence, not evidence-based medicine. This is very, very important. So documentation is very important. So dedication is very important. And finally, I'll, uh, uh, I want to say, you know, uh, when people say you pray God, you will get everything. If you pray God, you will not get everything. If you are dedicated to God, you will get everything. This is very, very important. If, some, if two people go to the God and offer same prayer, you know, son and daughter, son and, okay, you can, you can take father and son going to God. And our father is praying that my, my son must get married away. He should get a lady like Sharmila Thakur. And son says that I should not get married. If at all I want to get married, I should get a person like a Karina Kapoor. You know, how can the God give two things to him? So you should be dedicated. God also watches how much dedicated you are and gives you everything. So but the last message which I wanted to tell you is Alexander's the great three wish wishes. With that, I'll resume to my seat. When Alexander uh, Great, after conquering every part of the world, returning to his own country to see his mother, he felt that, yes, I'm going to die. There were three wishes for him. He called his, uh, uh, you know, this military general and said that, I know I'm going to die. I have three wishes. Then he asked surprisingly, what are those? He said that, after I die, my coffin must be carried by my physicians. My coffin must be carried by my doctors. He asked why. He said, no doctor can cure death. I want to tell this world that nobody can cure death. So I want to tell that that's why my physician must carry, not my relatives. Second is, fill the, fill the road by my gems and stones, whatever I have conquered. People should understand that I can't take away anything, whatever I conquered. The third wish was, keep my hand empty away from the coffin. The world must understand that nobody, I go empty handed after my death. This was a wish. But he has challenged physician. Today, death occurs because of non-communicable diseases. Earlier, people used to die for cholera. Now, there is solution. People used to die for tuberculosis. Now, there is a solution. Communicable diseases. There, is, there was black murder. You know what is black murder? Plague. It has taken away 35% of the world population. But today, the deaths are happening because of non-communicable non diseases like diabetes, cancer, so many things. So this is the biggest challenge where this Savaripa can take a stage in treating this. Now you have a golden cake. Who is going to use it? Who is going to eat it? It is with you. Wish you all the best. I hope this conference was a big brain drain uh, from the brain it's gained. And I think this is going to be very, very useful for us. Also, please send the report to Central Council of Indian Medicine. Action taken reports and we can very well see how it can be implemented for your future development. Thank you so much and wish you all the best. Special thank you to Dr. Vanita Murali Kumarji nice for <laughs> coming directly to the function from a conference at Colombo, Sri Lanka. And thank you so much for your very interesting <coughs> and very lively address. Now I request uh, Keshengawa Samdilla, the Vice Chancellor of the Central Institute of Tibetan, Higher Tibetan Studies, to address the gathering. <clears throat> Respected uh, Chief Guest, uh, Shri Kiran Riji Juji. The Honorable Union Minister of State for Home Affairs, Government of India. Our guest of honor, Dr. Vinita Murali Kumarji, the President of CCIM. Distinguished uh, scholars, practitioners, and the participants of this conference uh, who have come from different parts of the world. I should be conscious of time because we have very limited time. The aeroplane was already late by uh, around 20 minutes and then we got further delayed by another 10 minutes. So totally we are delayed by about 30 minutes. And the Honorable Minister has to leave uh, Delhi by the flight which is on 6.30. So we 
do not have a time. First of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, Honorable Minister for sparing time out of his uh, extremely busy schedule. We hoped uh, and requested him to be here during our Golden Jubilee celebration, but uh, because of his uh, committed, uh, pre committed uh, schedules, he could not be here with us. Even though he could not uh, be here earlier, this is his first visit to the university. He is uh, very much uh, conversant and uh, aware of this institute, its activities, so it is not something new to him. This institute, uh, which is established uh, 50 years back, is uh, focused on the preservation and conservation of uh, Tibetan culture established by His Holiness with uh, the help of Indian government and uh, was established uh, jointly conceiving the idea of this institute to provide uh, opportunities for the students who are senior students who came from Tibet and the st senior students from Himalayan region who used to study in Tibet. And to provide an opportunity for them, this was established and this has been serving as a center of uh, Tibetan studies which includes uh, not only the philosophical and epistemological and uh, metaphysical and uh, logic classes, subjects disciplines, but also it covers uh, medicine, fine art, astronomy, astrology, history, literature, languages, and things like that. So this time, on the occasion of this uh, um, Soharigba conference, since we do have a department of Soharigba, and uh, which has been involved in many areas of not only in teaching but also in different uh, research works. So we thought to host this uh, conference uh, on the occasion of a Golden Jubilee celebration. Sovarikpa, as one of the representatives from the West, uh, said that uh, to maintain and requested and suggested to maintain purity of its uh, uh, legacy and uh, the discipline and its uh, practice. I really appreciate that idea. There is a need of uh, maintaining the purity of uh, this uh, discipline because this is a very rich uh, uh, discipline, medical discipline, with a very rich history which goes beyond uh, 3,000 years and then as uh, the earlier speaker spoke about uh, having contact with the many medical practitioners and scholars from different uh, neighboring countries. I should not be repeating this, but uh, as a result of uh, such interactions, uh, this further got de developed and evolved. And it is uh, certainly very rich. And now, in front of us, uh, we have uh, so many things to take care. First of all, we have to maintain and retain the legacy, the rich legacy that we already have. And then within that also we have to take care of uh, certain things. Uh, we should not be losing all the traditions that we have. And also we need at some point to take uh, attention, pay attention on some of the practices and theories which have uh, disappeared in course of time. The richness of the, this discipline can be uh, known from the fact that uh, even though I am not a, a medical practitioner and a student of this uh, discipline, but when we have uh, discussions with the scholars and practitioners on various occasions, it was surprising to know that uh, this medicine had the concept of vaccination way back in 8th century. And also the blood cells, white blood cells, red blood cells, and yellow blood cells, which was already in the text of 8th uh, eight, century. And besides that, the 
these texts, the treatises and the you know, tradition also has a very sophisticated uh, account of brain, which uh, is very rare to be known in the traditional uh, medical system. And also we came to know from certain sources that there have been uh, many medical treatises which uh, are written or brought up for the treatment of a certain diseases, epidemics like Ebola. The name is not mentioned, but the, the, the sign and the indications uh, given there is very much similar to Ebola. So these are not something that uh, superficially, you know, at randomly uh, mentioned, but it is mentioned with the details of the practices, details of the treatment, details of uh, the medicines to be given. So it's, it's certainly very rich, sophisticated, and we have to, you know, revive many of these, many of such uh, uh, the, the aspects. Now we are at the cross of modern age, as Madam was referring to, the digital age, and also we are confronted and we have come across with so many disciplines and uh, different uh, cultures. At such a point, we should be pay, we must be paying attention to have interaction with the other disciplines as well, but we should be very careful not to get it diluted. This to have interaction and to adopt certain things from others is different from, very much different from mixing together. We should be having interaction, have exposure to other disciplines and enrich within the framework of our own discipline based on our own understanding of the system and how we can develop our own system. If we adapt and just cut, cut paste you know, with the mechanism, then that would be very harmful for our tradition. So therefore, we must uh, do the research, have interactions, as I used to say, I said on the uh, inaugural session also, that the modern medicine ha has done tremendous service to humanity, but there are certain things that they have not been able to address. They will be able to address, I hope. There are certain things which are associated with the mental state, and uh, the Tibetan med medical system and also the Ayurveda has the capacity to address uh, both the ailments of a uh, you know, physical body and the mind. Because this very system believes that uh, the physical ailments are associated with the you know, mental state. So if you want to address, if you want to address the ailment at a deeper level, then we have to address them, go to the mental state. Therefore, there are certain very rich mechanisms and systems given in the Tibetan medical system that uh, how to address uh, such uh, you know, chronic diseases and uh, such um, diseases which are associated with the mind. For example, the lung, the vayu. The vayu itself is uh, some kind of, you know, a kind of disease which is not uh, being ably, uh, you know, efficiently addressed by modern medicine. So Tibetan medicine has this capacity, Ayurveda also has this capacity, and has a very rich uh, system and uh, services that it can provide. So we have uh, such a potential, at the same time we should not feel that uh, we have everything and we do not need to learn more. But when we learn, again we must uh, have a very proper approach and attitude that we must enrich our own system, having interaction with others, but not losing our own identity, but at the same time enriching our own system. So this should be the kind of approach that every medical practitioner must have. Otherwise, if you mix everything, then you will dilute it, and then one day you will be of nowhere. So therefore, we must pay attention to all the traditional practitioners, not only of medicine, but also other, of other you know, disciplines as, as well. So I should not be taking much time, so I once again Thank our Honorable Minister for coming here and the Madam also for coming here, being with us. And I appreciate all the uh, scholars and practitioners of medical discipline for being here and uh, uh, deliberating very seriously on your disciplines. With great interest, you have come from so many different countries. 
and uh, we think that we, I think we must proceed further with the very strong communication and interaction and coordination. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kisla. May I now request our chief guest, Sri Kiran Rijijuji, Honorable Union Minister of State for Home Affairs, Government of India, to address the gathering. Sir. Dr. Vadita Murali Kumarji, most respected Kishengawang Samtenla, Dr. T. Palsang Thagawa, Professor Lopsang Tenzin, Venerable Monks, distinguished participants, my brothers and sisters. I have not come here to speak as much, but as for giving recognition, participation, and to value that you have organized such an important event, which is very much necessary, especially for me, for the Indian society in large. This is a, such a subject that a common man or a common citizen do not understand the value amidst the gl glamorized medical world now. People are bowled over by the way things have happened. Of course, Madam was giving a very right example from the discovery of will to the internet days. And when we talk about internet, mobile phone, WhatsApp, the biggest victim is the politicians. <laughs> we are not able to sleep. We are suffering because of the advent of the direct contact system. So being a victim of all this advent of the modern gadgets and all these facilities, the digitized world, we need better treatment. I think this <laughs> Savaripa is a better treatment for politicians. So not only the ailment in the body, but the mental treatment is very important. And I think nothing can be better than Savaripa to get a very healthy life. I personally see that some kind of treatment which do not have side effect is something I always look for. You know, it is rightly said, Madam also rightly quoted about the uh, last incident of the great Alexander. We can't defy that. But as long as we live, we must live a healthy life. That is important. Sometimes in the name of treatment, we really experience experiment our life to the extent that we actually don't live peacefully. And there are some beautiful quotes from His Holiness Dalai Lama also about life. But I don't want to get into all those uh, important uh, you know, quotes which I'm not able to elaborate here. But I'm grateful that I've been invited and happy that I have managed some time to be with you. This is my first coming to this institute. This is a beautiful center. And this is actually a center of excellence. And I realize that government of India needs to give much more importance to, to this institute for its growth. It's very important. <clears throat> so while coming on the way from airport, I was talking to Geshe, and he was mentioning about the jobs he's doing, the kind of efforts he's putting up and the expectation from the ministry. I'm going to speak to the minister and the secretary concerned. Secretary is a good friend of mine, Mr. Raghavendra Singh. <clears throat> I'm going to speak to him about what could be possibly uh, done. 
to, to enhance the ability, the capacity, and everything of this very important institute. In 2007, a group of members of parliament, we, we gathered in a place and we said that Sawarikpa, it is ancient way of uh, tre giving treatment to our people. And it is unfortunate that we have not recognized yet in India. So I was the member of parliament those days and we arranged meeting with the minister, then minister of health and with the other senior ministers in the government and we finally got it recognized. And now we have a ministry and that ministry of uh, Ayush it's uh, really looking after all this matter, but I was a bit surprised that still this is with the Ministry of Culture, but I will not say that under which ministry this <coughs> institute function because it will become controversy if I <laughs> make a statement. But I was expecting that uh, this institute was under the Ministry of Ayush. But anyway, that is a matter of uh, technicalities and a matter of governance, but what is important is this institute must grow. And this important five days international conference, and I'm happy to note that 201 participants are there from different countries also. It has taken a root in various countries because people have understood what is Sawarikpa. And <clears throat> people living in Himalayan region, for them, they know it. They have lived with it. They know what is Sawarikpa. And beyond, in the whole of Tibet region, now in China, Russia, Mongolia, people know, people know the value of this particular system of medicine. But I feel that, you know, in Indian, uh, you know, ancient way of our treatment, and this Sawarikpa, it is actually you know, flowing from the same tradition. And I see some spiritual sense in it also. Because if you see closely how this uh, uh, Manse Kang has developed and how this uh, Sawarikpa has developed in Tibet, this is something very close to the advent of Buddhism. So there are some kind of a spiritual connect in it. And if we see the value of life, the kind of treatment we impart, and how much it has developed over the years, these are all interconnected. I think the, the studies which you have done so far is immense. And the, the themes which you have discussed, I was just going through, uh, you had formed into uh, some uh, various groups to discuss on subjects like glimpses into the three great medical system of Asia, present state of Sawarikpa in Asian countries, clinical management of somatic disorders, clinical, clinical management of the psychological disorders, pharmaceutics and research, advanced Sawarikpa practice, medical legal issues, materia medica and its challenges, hands-on practical training. Such important, I'm sure you must have dealt in depth while discussing about this uh, subject and I'm sure the recommendations and all kind of ideas which is going to come out of this five days conference are going to be immensely beneficial for furtherance of this particular system. I'm not an expert on this matter but going through the notes and the background and the kind of experiences various people have shared that how much they have actually benefited. This is I think something which we should not just make it as a matter to be discussed only in seminars or conference, but this must be brought in the door of the common people. I have, see, as a, as a human being, we all suffer. I have seen my close people dying. Everybody will experience it. Everybody must have experienced it at some stage of time. We have to as a human being, we have to encounter the tragedies. So at the time of tragedies, we try to 
find out which is the best way to deal with it, which system, what medicine, what treatment is the best form of treatment. The experiences will differ, you know, differ from person to person from time to time. But we have accumulated experiences that how much the Savarikpa has been beneficial to so many uh, different very critical cases. So our um, uh, Geshe Samdhanla has also shared with me that some of the unique cases where, you know, people had lost hope, but it was revived miraculously. These are the experiences we would like to share with many more people. So I was actually seeking advice from him, from the Vice Chancellor, that please give me some write-ups. I will not be able to tell you what to do, but I will certainly carry forward what is need to be done. If you can tell me what I should do as a member in the government, as a leader who comes from the region, who is associated with this cause, I, I will be happy to contribute in whatever possible manner you feel, I am always ready. As I said, <clears throat> to, to just to read out from some of the notes which I have received, Savarikpa, which is, of course, signs of healing, is one of the classic examples of it. Gyushi, four tantras, the fundamental text of this medicine. It was composed by Yuthok Yonten Gonpo, who is believed to be the father of Savarikpa. Gyushu is based on indigenous medicine of Tibet, enriched with Ayurveda, Chinese and Greek medicine. So how it has infused different system and methods. This needs further studies and further, you know, elaborate studies, in fact, to, to see that how the best form of this treatment has emerged over the years. The impact of Sawarikpa along with Buddhism and other Tibetan art and sciences, that is what I was referring to, the spiritual touch on the whole process. And it's, you know, spread in all neighboring countries, not only limited to Tibet and the Himalayan region. In India, this system is widely practiced in Sikkim, Arunachal, Darjeeling, Dharamshala, Lahol, Spiti and Lata. This is where the Tibetan Buddhism influence is deeply entrenched. And that is how the influence of this particular system of medical treatment has also been spread. So that is how I see the, the relation and wh how I see the spiritual angle also attached to the whole process of the treatment. There are many important things and how, you know, the, uh, the, the old ancient Indian concept of looking at the body, life itself. This is what I have found here. Savarikpa is based on the principle that bodies of all the living beings and non-living objects of the universe is composed of five cosmophysical elements of Jungwanga. This is uh, what we all know. Even the Charvak school of thoughts have propounded this. Prithivi, Jal, Agni, Vayu and Akas. So this is very important. You know, I, I personally feel it is so real. This order is the result of imbalance of proportion of these elements in our body. It's a mechanical functioning in our body. This is so rightly being described. The medicine and diet used for the treatment of this order is also composed of the same five basic elements. In context of this theory, a physician would use his knowledge skills and experience in treating a patient using the theory of similarity and dissimilarity, Samanya and Visesa of five elements. Thus, the basic theory of Savarikpa may be adumbrated in terms of following five elements. That is, the body in disease as the locus of treatment, antidote, that is the treatment, the method of treatment through antidote, medicine that cures the disease, materia medica, the pharmacy and pharmacology. So these are, I mean, if I look closely, these are scientifically so proven. It is so true 
that people like us, the common people like us, we try to understand much more that how this is so relevant, especially in the modern time. And I, I would like personally to see that in India, this system of treatment must grow. We are a large society. India, such a 1.3 billion population with so much of problem. Sometimes treatment has become an experiment, as I mentioned, of the modern treatment, what, what we call this, the, the commercial or commercialization of the whole medical process. This has taken so much of precious lives. Common people are helpless. They don't even realize that their body has been <coughs> just put in for experimental purpose. But here, <coughs> in this Savarikpa system, there is no chance of treating a human body as experiment. You are just giving a proper treatment. There's no experiment. You are not experimenting the human body. This is so important. So that is why I really would like to understand with the ministry, with those people who are involved with this system, how we can enhance the whole process and then change the outlook, how to bring it to the lives of the common masses. This is something which we must look into. As I said in the beginning, I could have shared with so many things which I have been uh, given with the notes and other things, but I, have, I realized that I have come here not to share my ideas or give my expertise on the subject, but rather all the experts have gathered here. People have devoted your life for this whole subject. You are here. Our foreign delegates are here. You are going to take it forward in respective countries and contribute through your uh, deep uh, and uh, your experience in this particular subject. So I think together we can contribute a lot. So as a as a person who has um, uh, benefited from this system, me, my family, we have benefited from this particular system. I have a bounded duty to contribute something for the growth of this particular system. And uh, uh, I think um, this kind of seminar must be conducted in Delhi also, where we can invite some of the senior government officials where we can have larger participation from the government side. So that it is not only people, you are there, who are already dealing with the matter, but people sitting in the government in high of official positions also should be taken on board. So that, and Madam is here, she will also, she has already given you some words that her medical council will also look into the matter when the recommendations, whatever the paper is shared with her, in the same manner, many more people must be brought into the whole process. So, I once again thank you, uh, thank you everybody for this wonderful time. And Geshe, Nawasamtenla, you have been very kind. You are very learned. You are the appropriate person as vice chancellor in this uh, uh, Central Institute of Tibetan Studies, and all our honourable uh, uh, members in the dais and the respected guests. आप सब से मिलकर के मैं बहुत अच्छा लगा कि मैंने जैसे कहा कि मैं बहुत वैसे तो अपना एक्सपीरियंस के तौर पर बहुत कुछ कह सकता हूं लेकिन मुझे लगा कि यहां बहुत कुछ अब मेरे तरफ से कहने का कोई आवश्यकता नहीं है आप लोग जानकारी जो लोग इस मामले में जो लोग जानकार हैं आप लोग यहां बैठे हुए हैं जिन्होंने इस इस सब्जेक्ट में जो स्टडी किया हुआ है आप लोग बैठे हुए हैं आपका काम से ही लाभ मिलने वाला है तो आप लोग का यहाँ मौजूदगी में मुझे भी यहाँ आने का मौका मिला निमंत्रण मिला मैं आभारी हूँ आई वन सेकेंड आई थैंक एवरीबॉडी स्पेशली दोस हु हैव कम फ्रॉम द डिफरेंट कंट्रीज फ्रॉम रशिया और द लेडी हैड आज फॉर नेक्स्ट थिंग व्हिच इज टू बी इन मॉस्को द प्रोग्राम एंड आवर डेलीगेट फ्रॉम यू एस एंड अदर कंट्रीज यूर यूर पार्टिसिपेशन हैज एन रिच दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड थैंक यू एवरीबॉडी Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your valuable talk and your valuable time.
I finally request Dr. R. K. Ubaidia Ji, Registrar of the Central Institute of Higher Tibetan Studies, to deliver the word of thanks. I respected dignitaries on the dais and of the dais, I respected faculty members, staff, dear students, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to give a formal vote of thanks on the occasion of validatory function of five-day international conference on Soripa for all. Central Institute of Higher Tibetan Studies is commemorating this year, 2018, as a golden jubilee year, and its conference is one among many other international and national level conferences planned to be organized by the Institute as part of the celebration. It is great privilege for us to thank the Chief Guest and Honorable Minister of State for Home Affairs, Government of India, Sri Kiran Rizuji. In spite of his extremely busy schedule, Honorable Minister came to our Institute and graced this occasion by his valuable speech. Sir, we feel so honored for this of your kind gesture. We request for your kind attention towards the development needs for our institute in future too. Sir, you will agree us that though we are small in size, but our contribution in enriching and restoring the Nalanda tradition of India and reaching it out to the international level is not small. I also express our gratitude to our Vice Chancellor and Chairperson of the occasion, Professor Geshe Nawang Shantenji. He has always stood as our motivational and guiding force during all our actions and keeps on giving important direction on each and every aspect of the arrangements from start to the end. Honorable Vice Chancellor has great <coughs> conviction for this Himalayan and Tibetan medical practice, and he has left no stone unturned right from the recognition from the Ministry of IOS, Government of India, but also the research development and propagation of the Swaripa. I also thank the guest of honor, Madam Dr. Vanitha Murli <coughs> Kumar Ji, President CCIM, for coming to our institute and delivering the important speech. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Professor Lobsheng Tenjin, Dean Faculty of Soripa and Chairman, Central Institute of Tibetan Medicine, Dr. <coughs> Trogawa, Director of the Shagopodi Tibetan Medicine Institute, CTIM, in Darjeeling, for organizing the international conference successfully. Your tremendous efforts shall prove to be milestone for the establishment of Swaripa. We feel immensely happy to see great number of scholars of the field, not only from the various parts of India, but also from the ab abroad, like Switzerland, Myanmar, Bhutan, Nepal, Russia, and other countries. We extend our heartfelt, heartfelt thanks to all the participants and the speakers of the conference. We also thank all the media persons who have covered the proceedings of the, uh, proceeding of the conference very successfully. Due to this, their efforts, the coverage has remained quite satisfactory among both the print and electronic media. And last but not least, I thank all the faculty members, staff members, and dear students of the Institute who work day and night to make this event successful. Thank you all. Jai Hind.